for today and tomorrow in the National Assembly is going to be the report by the Committee of Finance and Planning on the Finance Bill 2023. <laughs> so we've already seen, okay, there are some things that uh, the committee has said. We heard from the people and from those people we have then responded and we are proposing some amendments to what had initially been brought to this house. That's what we want to discuss. Dr. Abraham Rugo, a friend of the show, joins <laughs> us. <laughs> Man who understands budget and budget issues. Karibu sana. Asante, asante. Good morning. Good morning to you. It's good to be back here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, off and uh, on conversations around this. Yes. Uh, First, I think we have said everything we can say <laughs> about this matter <laughs> uh, to an extent that uh, there's, uh, there's, a, there's an increased public consciousness around matters taxation. I think this perhaps is the best gain that has been made around this season for many years. I mean, the finance bill is tabled every year mm -hmm. uh, uh, from last year, if I'm not wrong. It's the first time the finance bill is being tabled together with the budget estimates. Parliament made a decision mm. that we want to see. When we are approving how much will be spent, we also want to approve. We want to see. So they are all tabled Where together. The money will Normally, be from. it will be tabled after 30th of June. Mm. So it basically, it will be tabled after the speech tomorrow. Mm. Is when the finance bill would, would come to the House. And that time, they have already appropriated everything. They have made decisions about what is... Well, they basically appro approved expenditure. Yes. Uh, so at the face of it, very good idea mm. uh, to make sure that uh, we are able to see both uh, both 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 statements uh, together mm. um, and you see the kind of responses uh, mm. I think the chairman confirmed that they received a thousand six hundred or is it a thousand eight hundred uh, uh, submissions uh, which and they sat and I, I, I mean I was one of those who made a presentation uh, at the Hilton Garden Inn where they were meeting mm. uh, and they listened to about a hundred and 40 stakeholders uh, and they were seated there for many hours every every day mm. um, which for me that's again in terms of public engagement in terms of public participation the question is what have they done with what they with were the told? information that you give them yes take a pause let's welcome you first into the ish conversation right and ct has the day's proverb mm. this week's proverbs are from zambia, zambia whose capital is lusaka mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't start a fight just because your companion is strong. Don't start a fight just because your companion is strong. Mm. <laughs> Dr. Rugo, when you hear this. Ah, this is, reminds me of very good days. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was not always this big. Uh, <laughs> I was a very all tiny. The, all this strong. <laughs> all this strong. So what I did when I was in primary school, I kept... <laughs> big people around me <laughs> like re real bullies uh -huh. you know uh, i kept one or two around me mm -hmm. and uh, that was a basis of uh, 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 for me to you know <coughs> so did you start fights or were you just using them as well you protection? know from from time to time i i, I was also insulted so i started something <laughs> i reacted <laughs> It was all but, your fault. But I used to react knowing Nikona Jesh Yang. You became a Kenyan very early in life. <laughs> so, so, so that proverb is, is very, but it's very true. You know, <laughs> how else are you supposed to survive? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, so, so it's, uh, uh, yeah, but anyway, definitely, I think it means that uh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't count on the strength of others to save you. But uh, you shouldn't not... get into 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 complicated situations because you know somebody will come to your rescue. But is that not politicians do and political parties do all the time? <coughs> I know I have a majority in parliament, mm. so I will mm. do exactly what. That's happens. exactly what is happening right because now. I know <laughs> my companion is our strong companion. Our strong, uh, strong companion. So uh, and I can speak to you the way I like. Yes. No, and I can I can say to you anything I want. Anything I want. Because my companion yes. will save me. Yes. Uh, but in real life, sometimes your companion also uh, <coughs> chooses <laughs> self-preservation of <laughs> 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 your, your rescue. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants to start an enemy on behalf of others. Just because I'm with you, then your enemy mm. becomes my enemy. No. Yeah. But you see it all the place, mm. you know. Uh, people just provoke others because they know somebody else. Somebody's coming, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I've got big brother. <laughs> I have a big brother. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so continue the conversation. Uh, Give us your experience when you appeared before the mm, finance and yeah. planning committee. Right? What were you presenting? How did they invite you? Mm. How did it go? Uh, so first of all, we uh, we were invited, and um, they had a long list of people. Um, um, arguably, a lot of private sector uh, institutions, audit firms, and law firms mm -hmm. uh, were invited. The day we were invited, we were there by nine o'clock. We were to present at uh, at ten o'clock, uh, but it was until four o'clock that we got audience with the committee. No, right. they they meant <coughs> suck to me. No, 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 no. You see no, how this Kenyans. inverted the clock. Uh, uh, <laughs> we read, we read wrongly. Uh, so I don't want to know what guys, the guys who were supposed to present Sakumi, who also checked in at that three thirty. At three thirty, what time they presented? Uh -huh. uh, and there was a long, long queue. Um, um, in a way, they allowed uh, people to really um, uh, argue out their cases. But of course, as the day ran over. Uh, they started saying, summarize uh, your, your points. We appeared there as a part of the Oko Uchumi campaign, mm. uh, which, you know, quite a number of members have been here. Mm. Um, my recollection is that uh, the committee seemed to suggest two things. One is that they were willing to listen, but two, their hands were tied. Mm -hmm. Explain. Uh, when they said their hands were tied, uh, they, they basically were trying to say, you see, the kind of situation we are in, in the, as, as a country, mm. uh, these things, are you not looking at the positives? And I see the language, uh, the language used in one of the statements that uh, uh, the, 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 the chairman gave, mm. you know, talking about uh, the negative impact of retaining VAT at 8% outweighs, you know, uh, <laughs> the positives. So, 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 so almost it was, the same, it was the same language of you guys, don't you see these things? Can't you see the struggle? Uh, so they were trying to <clears throat> basically like, you know, as you are engaging with you, they are trying to justify precisely what's which, contained here. Yeah, yeah which, okay. which, I, which I thought was uh, perhaps, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in the spirit of deliberation, mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing. But in the spirit of listening, I think uh, uh, it perhaps didn't come out the way it should have come out. Because uh, it almost came out in the same language of Hiki to Nimzuri, this thing is good and you should just accept it. Mm. And you see, it was also coming at the background of, of, of it will pass without even changing a comma yeah. or a full stop, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, uh, for me, that was not a surprise because I have been in this space for now 16 years. Uh, from the days of the Institute of Economic Affairs. Mm. And we've presented a memorandum, literally, I think every year that I have been involved in this work, we have made, I've made a submission in one way or another. Mm. Some have been completely ignored, in, and, and I say ignored because I don't know what is done with it, because we never get feedback mm. uh, 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 from. But the fact that this was an open forum, that even other, we, we sat in their presentations of other, other, other Kenyans mm. uh, and, and organizations, for me, that was a, was a good thing. One thing I, I really hope can happen in the future, can this be actually be done in a public space and live? Mm. Mm. So, that, space, so that... Like, like what exactly? Like, for instance, do it even somewhere like KICC where everybody can come, you know. Uh, they also did the KICC session, didn't they? The, the KICC sessions are neither here nor there uh, because really it's more presentations than listening. This was a good time to, li to listen. Uh. But two, in this day and age where technology is good, it doesn't make sense for somebody from Mandera. Of course, there were constituency conversations, mm. some of which were open, others which were fairly closed, because then the MPs of those constituencies decided this is the time for my people mm -hmm. to say they are issues to the national government. Some even tried to lock out, you know, uh, people from other constituencies mm -hmm. who are coming in, and they were saying, no, no, no. But there are people are saying, no, 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 but this is a national conversation. It's only that it's, it's been selected to happen in these 16 counties and in this particular uh, uh, space. I still believe that there is room for uh, a national conversation on these issues mm. uh, uh, where anybody who wants to make an, an input can make an input. Technology allows that. Uh, we saw during COVID, technology does allow that. We, uh, where I work at the International Budget Partnership Kenya, we've been able to pull that kind of a conversation. Um, so, so it was really everybody saying everything uh, to the committee. And at one point I wondered, um, you know, 
how much of this uh, uh, was really being absorbed. Mm. Uh, they have a very good chairman uh, who understands the issues. Um, and uh, um, uh, but also also tried as I've said really try to justify yeah, you know, why why things are trying to explain uh, it, right? uh, yeah. did you get a sense of unanimity with the committee members like were the committee members speaking the same language not quite not quite not not quite oh, and it's difficult of course to know mm -hmm. at the face of their conversation but as you talk to them uh, differently I think uh, many are uh, as they listened on they were coming to appreciate, hey, by the way, this thing is not what we thought. Mm. Of course, there are those who are on a very strong party line that we know this is what our party, mm. this is what is going to give our party success. Yeah. Mm. But perhaps what was most interesting is that uh, uh, when it came to the discussion around the housing, uh, the housing uh, discussion, mm. and um, I also sat in when the PS came, uh, the PS came when we were still there waiting. Mm. <coughs> He's actually responsible for why we delayed and waited longer. Uh, that's a story for another day. Uh, but one of the things he was saying, he was saying, but look at how this housing will help your constituencies. You know, they are, we are planning to build houses in every, this is the first time I heard it clearly, that they were planning to build houses in every constituency. Mm. It was no longer every even count. Every constituency. Yes. Every constituency, 290 of them. Mm. You know, and uh, that, was, that was new because mm. that had not been in the conversations. Mm. Initially, it was counties that were donating land. Uh, 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 to, to, and, uh, and that seemed to be an appeal to say MPs, so our issues are also, your issues are also taken care of. You know, mm -hmm. we have taken care, uh, and, and and so that that was what was so. So I think the reality of the situation we are in as an economy was coming was coming to bear, mm -hmm. uh, and you could hear some of them starting to say, perhaps maybe we could have thought about this in a different way. Perhaps there are things we can delay, mm -hmm. um, because that's what. If I'm not wrong, and I can't recall who said this, that about eighty percent of the people who made submissions uh were disagreeing of course some some in 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 phrasing say mm. they reject the entire finance bill of course that is wrong because mm. there's nothing like a finance bill it's clauses it's different clauses you cannot reject the entire thing you know uh, you need to because there are some things that are good <laughs> you know in, in that, that was my sense that's mm. what my take from the conversations okay so then now with most recent announcements that we saw over the last 24 hours yes. essentially and i I don't want to whittle it down to basics, good or bad, but is it a good thing that we've seen the budging uh, that we've seen uh, with some of the areas whereby the participation and the engagement that we saw over the last one month easily or just a little bit more than that has yielded something? Yeah, um, I, I, at the face of it, it's a good thing. Mm. At the face of it, I think it shows that, yes, somebody is listening. But the question is, what are they listening uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, badging? Let me use the one that I have heard very straight, mm. Mm. Uh, which was even confirmed by uh, 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 His Excellency Musalim Dabad yesterday in a meeting where I was. He said, we have listened to the people and we've agreed that this housing thing will be 1.5%. But the conversation was never about the percentage. <laughs> it was that it's there at all. <laughs> <laughs> that was never the conversation. We were not saying that we like this thing, but Mali Tuko, we are much. so stressed. Mm. No, 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 that was not the conversation. What was the conversation? The conversation was, what's the problem you're trying to solve? Okay. And the problem, if the problem is people who have no incomes getting housing, then are you asking those who have incomes to subsidize? Which is a language in NHIF. Mm -hmm. The NHIF language is very clear that uh, you pay according to your income, 2.75% mm. of your gross income. That's a very, and that is very clear. It's social health in insurance. You know, so basically you are saying those who have <laughs> pay, also support, to also support. support who for those, those who, do not, who do not have, because it does not mean that if I pay more, I will consume more. You'll get better service. Or get better, I'll get the same service, mm -hmm. depending on my sickness. Yeah. But here is, on one hand, you are saying that uh, uh, the people who don't have housing are those without incomes. But the people you are charging and you are, you are causing to pay for this scheme are those who have incomes. But do and, they have houses? Sorry? But do they have houses? You have not asked them either. 
you cannot determine that they don't have houses no, you, have, you have asked them in a sense as you have all, you have data you know precisely how many people own homes and how many people have income so if you go back to the numbers mm. and uh, the, the numbers that were used even in one of the meetings were 2017 numbers now we have updated numbers we have you know uh, we have uh, for instance the census of 2019 what we know is that in rural areas about 80% of the people who live there own live in their own homes yeah we can discuss the quality we can discuss the different other mechanisms true in urban areas it's about 20% mm -hmm. of ownership mm -hmm. but that is not equal to the number of people who don't live in a house yeah so equating proper housing to home ownership i think is a completely different discussion mm -hmm. two the you and i who have incomes are not necessarily waiting for government to help build a house and what other countries have done is to deal with the mortgage mortgage systems yeah three in fact if if houses and i like what professor omenya did talk about uh if houses is all you are going for in places like nairobi you have a, an oversupply of houses but they are not affordable <laughs> so what you should you actually have an oversupply yeah. you have a surplus it's a the affordability one. of the house it's affordability the so the affordability of the house is not by taking more money from the person earning income is asking how can we help them own so it's an income challenge that you are dealing with and not necessarily a lack of houses okay so by reducing it to 1.5% you don't feel that it has addressed I don't think the yeah. submissions that are presented. So now, okay, I see. <laughs> now by reducing to first of all, I think we need to know mm. whether the total amount, the maximum amount remains as the same. So by reducing to 1.5%, what you do is that if you still retain that the maximum contribution is still 5,000 because we have not heard about that one yet. What you have done is that you basically have just moved the number of. Remember initially it was 85,000. Yeah. Anybody who was going to earn 85,000 and above mm. will contribute the maximum 5,000. Mm. And from there, whether you earn two million or whatever, you are going to contribute, yeah. you know, five five thousand. Mm. By reducing to one point five percent, basically you raise that figure, so that then you you reprieve more people, mm. so more people will pay less. Yeah. If the issue was that you needed money to be able to build more houses, then it means even the income from an income perspective. If you were to argue that this was a good thing. Government is going to uh, already, uh, you know, uh, build houses. Now they are asking you. So what they are saying, if you are going to pay, assuming even it reduces the five thousand max, for instance, mm. with five thousand and you wanted to own a house of three million, you are going to pay for it for for fifty years, from the math we had done earlier. Mm. Uh, are you saying now you're going to pay for it in a hundred years, you know, or more, or more years? Because remember, the affordable is that you are paying for your own ho house. You are paying to own it. Yep. Actually, you're not being, you're not necessarily being no, subsidized. Not just paying for it. The mode of <coughs> payment is equivalent to the rent that you paid. It's rent to own. Yes. So, but the question that I want to ask now, the, the, for, this is my take on this matter. You rightly put it when <coughs> when you say that they are trying to solve a problem that hasn't been identified, and I'm in agreement with you because. Did they bother to find out how many Kenyans actually want to own houses? Yeah. Did they bother to find out how much Kenyans are willing to spend in order to own a house if they want to? Or better still, did they bother to find out what Kenyans think about housing and what it is they feel that ought to be the way forward? Unless we're assuming we know better than them and we can suggest to them what it is that they want. And the numbers being used... At least the numbers that are piercing, and, and, and this is where I say this idea has not been thought through. Hmm. It has not been. Thought I think through. it has been thought through. I think it has been thought through by those who want to implement it, but in the absence of what I've just said. Precisely because yes. the th you cannot think through from a supply side, because then you end up with the same clout that we have right now. You see, if the mechanism is for ownership. What else you at the end people will actually, and, you, and you're already saying, by the way, if you will not own, and we've talked about that there are instruments that mm. we have already that will solve the problem, especially for affordable housing. Because these same people who you are targeting for affordable housing, who have an income, also make a contribution to NSSF. 
Some of them make a contribution to private uh, retirement benefit schemes. As we talk, there has been a proposal, I think it should be lying in parliament or somewhere thereabout, of how can you use pension funds as collateral for home ownership. For more, yep. No, it's there. Mm. So it's not like there are no instruments for this affordability discussion. Mm. But the Retirement Benefits Authority, we had, God rest his soul in peace, the CEO here, and he did tell us the very thing you're saying, yeah. that it's they have come up. It's already in operation. Actually. Yes, exactly. Mm. That you actually can use your retirement benefits as collateral for the very same thing that you're saying. Okay, unless it's not been fully operationalized because yes. it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, some and schemes still do not. Some schemes still do still not recognize, do not recognize that. that. But you see what I hear, Dr. Rugo, is there's a lot of English that's been thrown into this housing story. You know, everybody coming up, those who are saying, yes, it's working, English. Those who are saying, yes, it's not working, more English. Bottom line, it's in the finance bill. It has been reduced from 3% to 1.5%. There's something else that has happened here. That is the use of the word from fund to levy. What would that mean? If we stopped saying that this is a contributory scheme fund, a mandatory contributory fund into a levy, what would... What, First of all, what dynamics had, would change? the language all along has never been anything to do with a contributory scheme. Mm. If anything, that's what people have been pushing for. Mm -hmm. They've been saying, if this is for my good, let it be made a contributory scheme. Let voluntary, willing, voluntary, willing buyer, willing seller. You what know, it, I it go is, in. It's a mandatory contributory scheme. <laughs> Just like somebody NHIF. called it. Uh, somebody called it a national charm. Hmm? Uh, Just like NHIF. You know, just like if <laughs> if you were to argue from the point of a levy, mm. a levy is is is. Is, is charged on somebody who is consuming mm -hmm. that good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the technical consumption. At consumption. Mm -hmm. So technically, if you're going to make it a levy, then you have to have assured me I am actually getting the house. So it cannot start with speculate I cannot speculatively. Mm. It's not it's not a gamble. It has to be that I am assured I am and therefore what I'm being, it's like an off plan arrangement. <laughs> Yeah. It becomes an off-plan arrangement that I'm actually paying for the construction of the house. That I will eventually. That I will eventually. So I think if that's a language, which I think is what people have said, you know, uh, and, and, and then, that, because if you think about all fuel levy, it's basically by the person who consumes, you know, uh, that particular, uh, you know, the, the mm. toll charges, mm. you know, uh, all right. those are levies. You don't pay that levy if you don't consume the fuel. Precisely. Yeah. So, so if that, there's a language that has changed, perhaps it's a good thing. Uh, then, uh, uh, you know, then government now tosses itself into competition, of course, with the private sector mm. uh, and sees who, who, and I hope that then discussion moves back to the National Housing Corporation mm. uh, because National Housing Corporation has really been missing in this whole conversation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> they have actually, you know, uh, yet they are the ones who have, have the responsibility. Uh, of it. But let's talk about other things that we have had. Yeah, let's talk we, about, we also let's hearing take that, a break. Uh, Let's take a break and then we come and talk about all these other things we about, you know, there's the exports, there's the yeah. tax on fuel as well and all these others. Let's talk about them. It's 28 minutes to 8. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Dr. Abraham Rogo is a country manager for International Bus Business, International Budget, Budget pa Partnership Partnerships Kenya. Kenya. He's uh, been involved in this budget making process for many years. He presented on behalf of the Okoa Kenya what are they called? Coalition? Okoa Uchumi. Okoa campaign. Uchumi. Okoa yes. Uchumi. Yes, not Kenya. It's a Okoa Uchumi campaign. Spice. Conversation continues. Dr. Abraham Ruger from the International Budget Partnerships is our guest this morning. We are looking at the recommended amendments to the finance bill. City. You know, the, what I find interesting about this entire discussion mm. is how... A subject matter which on the face of it and in principle is actually a good thing mm. the idea of enabling people to own a home it's a good idea and how then this good idea is presented without consulting this person who is supposed to benefit from it and when they are consulted after the decision has been made Whereas a consultation ought to have taken place before <laughs> that decision was actually made. So that as you 
package this good idea, you package it with their needs and wants and ideas into it. Mm. And then it dovetails into something else that we don't talk about and yet in my mind it comes, it, it, it's at the heart of the matter. Because mm -hmm. we are always taxed and taxes always increase. There's always a discussion about taxes, always. For the first time, most Kenyans are learning that every year there's always a finance bill. Yeah. They think this is the first time there's a finance bill and many of them are <laughs> rallying against saying, all these years we haven't had a finance bill, why are we having a finance bill now? It's always and, and I've been told it's always there, it's just that you don't get to hear about it. So, it then, I then have to ask the question, so, okay, so what are we discussing here? And the discussion around trust comes, in my mind, to the center of it. Mm. And I ask, if there was more trust, would these debates would be as heated as this? And the answer, I think, is no. Yeah, and you see, and the trust would have been a factor of what you have seen in the past. Mm. I, don't, I don't think the trust deficit is because Kenyans just don't trust no no it's because they, they've are, been yeah, given reason not hope, to trust yeah, no, no, very strong ones uh and uh hopes have been dashed i think that's what has really heated this discussion uh because we have had uh, uh you know schemes conversations uh where where this did not but the 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 the, the, the bigger reason why parliament insisted in my opinion to have uh, uh to have the finance bill come together with the budget estimates mm. is so that then they have a second chance in my opinion to rationalize whether what had been so just two steps back mm. the budget process making budget making is a process is a cycle yes and therefore in february um there's a document called the budget policy statement the budget policy statement has all these things we are discussing right now mm. but at a slightly higher higher at a slightly higher level. Mm. That is where three things are normally stated. What are the an intended spending at sector level? So mm. sector we are talking about health, agriculture and rural development, for instance, uh, water, natural, na natural resources and environment, uh, sorry, what, <coughs> uh, natural resources and environment, water, those are sector level. Mm. But under them, they have several uh, 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 ministries, departments and agencies. Mm. And then the second thing they do at that point, they also approximate how much are we going to collect as tax revenue. And finally, how much are we planning to borrow? Mm. So in other words, the deficit. Yeah. So as far as, as February, then ministries retreat. Oh, sorry. There's also, also the amount allocated to the Parliamentary Service Commission and to the Judicial Service Commission and to counties as a block yeah. is also indicated at that point. Parliament approves the budget policy statement. Well, why it approves the budget policy statement is because then that is the guide of the ceiling. So nobody can budget over and above this that ceiling mm. unless there is some assurance of either extra funds, either through grants uh, or a bill. Mm. So when they bring the budget estimates and the finance bill, what the finance bill basically is saying is that we committed to raise 2.5 trillion yes. Kenya shillings in the coming financial year. So the finance bill then says, what are we going to adjust so that then, first of all, we raise what we raised last year. And that's why the finance bill is an amendment of different acts, mm. Income Tax Act, VAT Act. You know, uh, excise duty act and other miscellaneous laws that I have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, 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 that they require raising money, money, money for. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, that's at, the, at this particular point, then, Parliament is, and you had the discussion, the longer discussion yesterday in Parliament was they were actually approving the estimates of expenditure. Yep. And you heard how it goes it's line. By line. Line item. Line, line item, item by line item. Mm. So, of course, at program level. They, mm. they don't go into the very, but they, yeah. they are at program level still slightly. But and when you go under that, and we, are, we do analyze, it's, I think, a 2,000-something page document uh, and, and, and on Excel, or, uh, sorry, on, on PDF. Mm. They, uh, and Parliament has to. But Parliament is not lost to the fact that, should not be lost to the fact that, as they do that, they are actually also discussing the raising, finance raising measures. Yeah. What's my point? 
If it's already clear that you're not likely to collect what you hoped to collect because you have seen certain things improve uh, de developments in the economy, you've seen how the export market looks like, you've seen how the import market is looking like, uh, you've seen food production and what that entails, you know, the supply and, and what have you. And it's clear that now you're not likely. In fact, it was interesting because the two committees were sitting in the same, on the same floor. Uh, the Budget Appropriations Committee was sitting in the next room, mm. and the Finance uh, and National Planning Committee was sitting mm. in the next room. And they were, of course, sharing. They were saying, what are you, they should be asking, what, what are, are you seeing? hearing? What are you hearing? Mm. So it's an opportunity to actually also address the expenditure side. So government cannot just make a claim that the only problem we have is a revenue problem. Our expenditure is rationalized. We are good. All we need is Kenyans to it give us... to raise the money. Kenyans raise the money. Mm. And by the way, the extra money we are talking about is that we are talking about raising an extra 400 billion. Our target for this year was 2.1 trillion, 210 shillings. I like to use mm. numbers mm. we all can relate to. The target for next year is 250 shillings. So the amount that the finance bill is trying to plug, and that does not include the, the housing. Mm. And I still, I'm very curious why this housing fund found itself in the finance bill. Mm. Uh, um, uh, Where should it have found itself? This is a miscellaneous matter. It's, 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 not, a, it's, it's, it's not a revenue raising matter. It's not matter. a revenue raising matter because it's not, it's not a, the a monies <coughs> you are collecting from it are not contributing to what is budgeted for. Unless the whole plan all along and then going by if the chairman of the finance committee did not have a slip of the tongue last night, he is quoted to have said that now they have thought about it and now made this fund because people asked for it to be, now it's become a tax. It's confusing. Hmm. If it wasn't a slip of the tongue, we'll <coughs> see the report. We still haven't. We are waiting for the report. I really we'll want see to see the actual. He tabled actual, it last night, actual, but we'll see the, it. I'm, looking, I'm waiting to see the actual, and it's good we are having this conversation because I think uh, the actual wording, mm. because the housing fund and the projections thereof i have not seen them in the budget documents mm. in the way it's being framed mm. because it's talking about if you do the math based on the initial figures i'm here to do because i don't know how much is the total the upper limit of this 1.5 percent but if you worked with the initial three percent mm. the government was projecting collecting about putting into this fund about a hundred billion per year mm. 108 billion uh, um, assuming everybody pays you know uh so you're talking well, about everybody here is who exactly all the uh, salaried individuals so including my farm worker who received this who receives a salary from me well if they are registered in tax they mm -hmm. will pay you will have to contribute uh, yeah. first you need to contribute your part as you employ as, as the employer uh, I hope you submitted a memorandum uh, <laughs> because you're an employer in that, in that case. I mean, for if you work, argue it out that way, of course, yep. majority, I think the people being targeted are those who make tax returns, the 3 million individuals mm. who, who make tax returns. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a story for another, another day. For another, for another day. <laughs> Dr. Ruger, we've yeah. said, I mean, often that uh, it's been months, it's been weeks, really, of confusion. And that if something um, that is true... If something is true, it is not very difficult to explain. Yeah, and you don't need to remember. And what you, you don't said. need to remember what you said. Uh, but it seems that there's so much confusion, there's so much ambiguity. But the bottom line is that Kenyans are saying, here we are with a situation that's already depressed. We do not need anything that is going to come and add to that depression. So essentially, with these um, concessions that have been given mm. on the finance clauses of the finance bill, yesterday mm. have we seen this needle move in any direction really really um we can say there's a reduction from three percent to 1.5 percent we can say that some things have to remain because of one two three have we really seen that this needle has moved at all or are we still where we were on monday so you you see you see the needle <laughs> it's moving in opposite directions because on one hand you have for instance there's been a reduction uh, uh, from what we are seeing, uh, there's a reduction, there's an indicated reduction on digital uh, digital tax, mm. uh, 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 digital as I'm trying to get the actual words, uh, from 15%. Initially, it was 5%. Now, I see it's 3%. Mm. Uh, it's dancing somewhere, some, somewhere there. So, that has reduced. But then, you have increased the export levy uh, to 17%. And you've increased the rental income uh, tax, I think, uh, from uh, 10 to 15 percent. Um, so, 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 in terms of, I think government is trying to make sure that the net, 
remains the same. <laughs> the net remains the same. <laughs> uh, the net remains the same. But and you see, because of the interconnectedness of our economy uh, and the nature of our incomes, uh, it will still land. The actual pressure will still land on the same people. Because a big portion uh, of, uh, uh, of, um, of 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 our of our economy mm. uh, runs on salaried people with a regular income. It's you who has to pay your shamba guy, your house help. Then they go and purchase things in uh, from the economy. You know, you go and have your car washed. Then those guys who wash your car, then they are able to pay their rent. Then they are able. You see, the the pressure. Uh, and that's why I said any salaried Kenyan runs a welfare system, you know, uh, in one way or, an, or another, mm. you know, medical bills and what have you. Two, and this is where I think the government needs to carefully listen. And I hope actually this will actually come to the floor of the house. Some of the ideas around, uh, uh, for, 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 for instance, uh, uh, petroleum, we know that there is a tight space of how much because i said of these 250 shillings we are planning to actually collect mm -hmm. 165 of that will go to debt payment so we know they're in a tight space mm. but why are they not willing to also delay their gratification and reduce on some of their expenditures are outside this so that we say can we Take care of what must be taken care of, healthcare, education. Can we go slow on some of these other things so that we all, it cannot just be tightening of the belt Indeed. on one side. Right. Or be serious about fighting <clears throat> corruption, for example. I am coming to that. Okay. Corruption. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simba Arati was again in a forum where uh, uh, His Excellency Budavadi was also, it's a tax conference that is going on. Uh, I'm actually heading there from here. Mm. And one of the things he said is that if we don't deal with corruption, we are not going to make any progress. Who said? Simbarati. The governor of The Kisi. governor of Kisi. Okay. And he was saying, and basically, and this is not new, because we've done the math, and I think we have, <laughs> that math has been thrown everywhere, mm. that by just dealing with the wastage and corruption that is currently there, you basically save yourself about 700 billion, which can then be spent. 700 billion is more than what you're trying to raise with the finance bill for next year. 700 billion is equivalent to what you're planning to borrow. <laughs> and the cost of borrowing is going up. The bond that was just released last week, I think the average rate is now at 15%. Ghana, which is where we are, which was where we are 10, about five, 10 years, no, seven, eight years ago, mm. is now borrowing at 24%. 24%. Percent. How will you repay? Bus. So, 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 before we get ourselves into almost, uh, you know, a, 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 a difficult situation, we have to address the expenditures because the ex problem we are trying to deal with right now is not a revenue problem. Mm. I mean, you cannot continue living big, Eric. Uh, and then you, you, you come and tell me, Abraham, you know, Bana, hey, it's <coughs> that I don't, I don't earn very well. <laughs> if only I earned well, <laughs> my struggles will end. The more you earn, the more you spend. Two, the tax collection has actually been rising year on year in Kenya. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's been rising. But now, and again, allow me to refer to Mdaiwari. He said many interesting things yesterday when he came to open the conference. He said that, you know, uh, tax has a, has a point beyond which you cannot collect anything more. Mm. I was like, wow, that's very sound economics. I hope it is being applied. Uh, <laughs> you know? He, and was, I he was implying we haven't reached that point yet. And I worry mm. that we are not yet at a point. Of course, there's a discussion to be held about increasing the base. And perhaps the way to increase the base is reducing the rate. So that you have more people paying Kidogo. Mm. But is, you have more is it, people. Is it them paying or you want a situation where you enhance the willingness of people to pay you of course have to their willingness is by honoring the contract yes by making sure services are provided yes. because it does not make sense for me to pay tax mm. and i still have to take care of my health care and my garbage and my garbage 
and my security mm. including installing cctvs <laughs> and you have seen what they have done <laughs> 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 yes <laughs> you know so, so so i think for me is that the conversation cannot be held only one way kenyans don't want to pay they are already paying as we talk here we are paying tax yep you know yep. but let, let me talk about the vat discussion on fuel i think this is perhaps the one thing uh, that uh, there is a lot of adamancy from not changing it and I, and i think it will go as it is but i think it is important to appreciate the replica effect or rather um, what do you call it the ripple the ripple effect mm -hmm. anything touching on fuel has on the rest of the economy <laughs> especially on cost of living it's that it affects production mm -hmm. it affects transportation it affects a lot of other things that are connected and therefore what does that that cost is actually you know you see what eight percent is doing mm. now imagine now moving it to 16 percent it's connected to everything that it's connected do. to everything again there perhaps there could be have been a conversation uh and the argument by the way it's very interesting the argument is not necessarily an amount argument the argument the government has been making is a standardization argument yeah <laughs> We are doing this so that we don't have Standard some people day, paying eight yeah. percent. Why don't you reduce then everything to eight <laughs> percent? <laughs> Why go for the higher? You know, I have another uh, argument. For the right. go. You see, so so fuel was going at a certain price at the pump a couple of years ago. Correct. Like sixty bob less a couple of years ago. Mm. All right, it went up. And we still continue to consume. Mm. As it was going up, the cost of living has gone up and everything. Mm. But people have adjusted. Mm. So you as a government, just consider yourself OPEC and increase the price by an extra 8%. At least you collect that. People are still going to consume. But how much are you collecting? 8% more. You know, those who understand <laughs> these things, Eric will tell you, <laughs> there's what they call a point of diminishing returns. Yeah. Mm. You get to a point where... We haven't reached that point. No, we, I think we have. That is what Eric, Muda no, Mudavad no, no. is saying, there's a point. No. Yeah. So is but he, we haven't reached he, the he, point. But he, you can see, you can see already the constraint you have uh. with... And you see, by the way, because of all that we have talked about, the end game is that people's incomes are not improving yeah and even people are being laid off in terms of jobs yep. so you, you don't see an expansion in the in the in the in the income market or so, so, so you know in the job market as it were and because you do not see more people being employed then therefore you're saying that actually you don't have because tax is a factor of income you pay True. taxes you consume goods and services because you have an income you have an income yeah what are we seeing in the current financial year? Mm -hmm. We are targeted to raise 210 shillings. As at end of April, we had done 1.5. I don't think there is magic that will raise 600 billion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the extra, uh, not in the we next will not hit our target. We will not hit our target. Okay. Then you say, no, 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 you guys, relax. let's increase the target. Let's shoot this thing by another 4, 500, 4, 400 billion. In essence, if we raise 1.8 or 1.9, in essence, you have raised your target by another 700 billion. Yep. Eric, 700 billion is the amount you would save by dealing with corruption. Well, let me ask you this question, Dr. Aria. You know, we keep talking about incomes, the raising of incomes. And yet, in my mind, the discussion ought to be the value proposition that that income represents. If you keep increasing what I earn and it keeps buying me less, <laughs> how exactly have you helped me? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You have to look at this from all angles. Mm. One, public services. Mm. You see, all these countries that we keep quoting about how they pay a lot of tax and what have you, you will never open a tap and lack water. Mm. I studied in one of them, and uh, we had a blackout once in four years when I was there. Once. Mm. Once. Mm. Uh, and it lasted five seconds. There you go. And it was announced two weeks before. Mm. You were told? We were told there'll be a blackout on this day there will be a power interruption mm. because there's something we are doing and it will it, it varied it was not even more than a minute per se hours i think we only noticed it for like five five or so seconds you know, it wasn't long the point is at no one day and when i talked to my colleagues who we were doing on my phd together with when they told me some of the taxation 
levels, when they put everything together, it was coming to about 42%. You know? uh, but there's no day the bus was late. There's no day garbage was not collected. Public services. Public, public services are functional. Yeah. And therefore, in a country like that, they complain, of course. You know, I mean, it's Germany, so they complain about many things, <coughs> including the bus is late by, by, by a couple of seconds. <laughs> yeah, like, at least bus. it's coming. <laughs> at least there's a bus. <laughs> there's a bus and it's going to come at the end of the day. But you don't have to make noise. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because the thing has passed. <laughs> well, I found some of their problems very, very, very unrelatable. <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> unrelatable. <laughs> then I came back to Tomboya and I knew I was back home. <laughs> uh, but the point I'm saying is that you cannot make a case on only for revenue mm. if your expenditure is not providing for citizens the goods and services mm. that they are expecting that actually is their right and uh, the very reason why they pay taxes precisely mm. yes. precisely and if that does not happen then of course then there are other things you will have to deal with including the cost of food uh, um, i support the idea don't don't subsidize consumption subsidize production and make sure that, that those the subsidies are actually transferred to consumers because that's the only way they get to uh, to, to, to 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 gain therefore you have to you have to look at it from the different and therefore it cannot just be that the reason why we are not providing more is because we don't have more money already as we talk there is money available there is money being appropriated. There is money for education. There is money for schools, mm. for hospitals, for different. Why is it that we are, we are not seeing that kind of a public? And therefore, I have to do my math and ask, if I'm still going to provide for myself, then let me work out how much does it cost me to provide for my entire extended, this welfare system that yeah. I run, how much does it cost me? And then I net it off. And then, yes. Makes sense. It makes sense. There's always that question of, so why do I need a government if I'm going to do all these things for myself? For myself yeah. So, so, so they, that has to be worked on, and I hope that that will be a central conversation. Uh, but as parliamentarians uh, receive this report today morning mm. and start debating it, I hope they will remember uh, that while on one hand the, the dual the, the duality of citizenship, yeah. while on one hand you are a policymaker, mm. on the other hand you are also a consumer That's of true. that policy. That's true. Dr. Rugo, always a pleasure having you around. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Dr. Abraham Rugo is the country manager at the International Budget Partnerships Kenya. He's been our guest. Keep it here for more conversations. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.